Welcome back to Optimal Anesthesia. Today, we're diving into a critical topic that comes into play during neurosurgery, the delicate balance of intracranial pressure, cerebral perfusion, and the role anesthesiologists play in maintaining that balance. Let's talk about what happens during dura closure and how it impacts the brain and the patient. First up, intracranial pressure, or ICP. When surgeons open the dura, the protective covering of the brain, there's an immediate drop in ICP. Now, you might think that's a good thing, right? Well, it's not so simple. This sudden decrease in pressure can cause the brain to swell or bulge, especially if there's any pre-existing cerebral edema. The body reacts quickly, triggering a sympathetic response, which leads to hypotension and bradycardia, also known as the Cushing reflex. Sometimes, paradoxical hypertension can also occur as the brain attempts to maintain its blood flow. On the flip side, during the closure of the dura, ICP can rise again, especially if there's a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid or residual cerebral edema. This increase in pressure reduces cerebral perfusion pressure, CPP, which can compromise blood flow to the brain. In response, the body's compensatory mechanisms can kick in, causing systemic hypertension and reflex bradycardia, what we call Cushing's triad. If these fluctuations aren't managed carefully, they could lead to complications like brain herniation or ischemic injury. Now, let's talk about venous air embolism, or VAE. This is a serious risk, especially when the patient is in a sitting or semi-sitting position during surgery. Why? Well, the dural veins, which are under negative pressure in these positions, can literally suck air into the venous system if exposed to the atmosphere. Think of it like a vacuum effect. Depending on how much air is entrained, it can cause anything from mild hypoxemia and low blood pressure to full-blown cardiovascular collapse. When air emboli make their way into the pulmonary circulation, they can elevate pulmonary artery pressures and reduce cardiac output, leading to strain on the right ventricle. If the emboli are large or there's a patent foramen ovale, a PFO, the air can cross into the systemic circulation, causing even more dangerous complications like a stroke or heart attack. Next, we can't overlook hemorrhagic complications during dural closure. Suturing the dura, particularly in fragile tissues or areas with small blood vessels, can easily trap vessels and lead to bleeding. If hemostasis isn't well managed or there's excessive tension on those sutures, it can lead to blood loss and hemodynamic instability. Anesthesiologists need to be extra vigilant here, as anesthetic agents can influence vascular tone and coagulation, potentially worsening the situation. Finally, let's talk about how dural manipulation can trigger the sympathetic nervous system. The dura mater is highly innervated, and any manipulation can set off a significant sympathetic response. This means acute hypertension, increased heart rate, and higher myocardial oxygen demand. Patients with limited cardiovascular reserves, like those with chronic hypertension or heart disease, are especially vulnerable to these effects. Before the scalpel touches the skin, a lot of work goes into preparing the patient. Preoperative assessment is key to identifying those at higher risk of hemodynamic disturbances, patients with elevated intracranial pressure, ICP, cerebral edema, or compromised cardiovascular function are prime candidates for extra care. A detailed history, neuroimaging, and cardiac assessment help guide the anesthetic plan. Think of it like setting the stage before the big show, you need everything in place to ensure success. In these high-risk cases, invasive hemodynamic monitoring is crucial. Intraarterial pressure monitoring provides real-time blood pressure data, which is critical during surgery. Central venous pressure CVP, monitoring can also be beneficial, particularly in procedures performed in the sitting position, 
where the risk of venous air embolism, VAE, is higher. Let's move to the operating room. During brain surgery, managing ICP is a balancing act, especially when the dura, the outer membrane of the brain, is being opened. To minimize sudden shifts in ICP and cerebral perfusion pressure, CPP, we can use osmotic diuretics like mannitol or hypertonic saline to reduce cerebral edema. Hyperventilation can also help decrease cerebral blood flow by reducing PACO2 levels, but it's a fine line overdoing it could lead to cerebral ischemia. When it comes to VAE risk, prevention is the best medicine. If the patient is in a high-risk position, such as sitting or semi-sitting, continuous monitoring is essential. Techniques like precordial Doppler, entitled CO2 monitoring, and applying positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP, can help detect and mitigate VAE. And if air does get into the system, quick action is needed, flooding the surgical field with saline, aspirating air from the right atrium via a central venous catheter, and repositioning the patient can prevent catastrophic complications. During dural closure, it's all about maintaining the delicate balance of ICP. Too much fluid and you risk raising ICP, too little and you compromise cerebral perfusion. Monitoring ICP in real time can help guide these decisions. Anesthetic depth is also key. Agents like remifentanil are great for controlling acute hypertensive episodes, while volatile anesthetics help keep cerebral vessels dilated, reducing the risk of ischemia. Brain surgery is stressful, not just for the patient, but for their sympathetic nervous system. Dural manipulation can trigger a sympathetic response, leading to spikes in blood pressure and heart rate. To blunt these responses, maintaining adequate anesthesia depth is critical. Beta blockers and short-acting opioids can help manage these acute surges. For patients with compromised cardiovascular function, agents like esmolol or nitroglycerin may be necessary to maintain hemodynamic stability. The surgery may be over, but the work isn't done. Postoperative care is all about vigilance. Close monitoring of ICP and hemodynamic stability is crucial. Look for signs like changes in mental status, pupil abnormalities, or bradycardia. For high-risk patients, an ICU setting may be warranted to catch complications early. Pain management is another key component of postoperative care. Effective pain control not only keeps the patient comfortable but also prevents sympathetic overactivity, which can lead to hemodynamic instability. Multimodal analgesia, combining opioids, acetaminophen, and regional techniques offers balanced pain relief with minimal impact on blood pressure and heart rate. And, of course, early detection of complications is essential. Regular neuroimaging and hemodynamic assessments in the immediate postoperative period can make all the difference. Whether it's VAE, hemorrhage, or increased ICP, Catching these issues early can significantly improve outcomes. To sum it up, anesthetic management during brain surgery is a complex interplay of monitoring, medication, and rapid response. From preoperative planning to postoperative care, every step matters in ensuring the best possible outcome for the patient. Thanks for joining Optimal Anesthesia. Subscribe and stay informed. Join our Telegram channel via the link below.